Our time on earth is brief. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, our time on earth is very, very brief. It goes so quick. Time, okay? Do you like this acronym here? I think it's quite clever myself. Time is ticking by, okay? As for man, his days are like grass. The Bible says man's days are like grass. Just like grass, it grows, it dies, and then it's thrown into the fire as straw or whatever. It's used in other means. Now, let me use a, a little illustration. I've just recently got married, okay? I've got married, and in my house, uh, we've got a lovely little pantry. And where the pantry is, in between the pantry is a glass window. And on that glass window, that's where we perch our kettle. So every time me and my wife want to have a happy little cup of tea, we boil the kettle. And as the kettle boils, it leaves a vapour on the window. It leaves a stiff, a mist, a condensation on the window. And that mist is there for a short time, and then it disappears. It's there for a fleeting moment, and then it vanishes, never to be seen again. The Bible says, what is your life? It is but a vapour that is here for a short time and then vanishes away. Life is short, friends. We know it's short. Yesterday I was 10 years old, now I'm 24. My friend over here can say, he probably remembers when he was 24 and now he's in his 70s. Life is so quick. It keeps going and going and going. The other thing about time, time is irreversible. A time to be born and a time to die. That's what the Bible says. There's a time to be born and a time to die. People are born in this world, they live their life and then they die. More people are born in this world, they live their life and then they die. And this goes round and round. People on this earth live in life. In Austria-Hungary, there's a massive big clock, okay? In one of the center cities, there's a big clock. And on that clock is a grim reaper. And that grim reaper's holding a bell. And he's, and he's ringing this bell. And that bell rings whenever the wind blows past it. Do you know what that bell represents? It represents your time on earth. One day, I don't mean this literally, but that, that bell's gonna ring. And your time is gonna end on this earth. And there's things in this world that you cannot change have happened. Because time is irreversible. You can't turn back the clock. I work in a school. And sometimes I look at the kids and I think, do you know what, I'd love to be a child again. I'd give anything to be five, ten years old again and to do things differently. But I can't, can I? I can't turn back the clock. I'll never be able to turn back the clock because time is irreversible. The second thing is, time is measured. Well, who's it measured by? Who on earth is time measured by? It's measured by God. Man's days are numbered by God. Let me tell you this. Do you know how many days the average person will live on this world? 28,000 days a person will live on planet Earth. 28,000 days you've been given on this Earth. But correct me, am I wrong? Do you think people die after 10,000 days? 5,000 days? Let me, let me ask you this. In Wigan Infirmary, do you think that in Wigan Infirmary, say there's a thousand people in the hospital ill, do you think at least a hundred of those people are terminally ill that are under the age of 50? Do people die at 20 years old? You might think I'm 20, I've got many years left, but do people die at 20 years old? Do people die at 50 years old? At 40 years old? Am I wrong when I say this, folks? Do you know when you're going to die? Only God knows when you're going to die. And as you've stopped here and you've listened, You've had less, you've got less heartbeats than when I first started. Am I wrong? Since in the last 10, 20 seconds you've been listening, you've got less heartbeats than when you started. Your days are numbered. Guys, I'm not saying this out of fear tactics. I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just being real. Your days are numbered. And the final thing is, time ends. The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once, and after that to face the judgment. One day, folks, you will die. 10 out of 10 people die. There's two things that are sure in life, death and taxes. And one day you will die, and you will meet your creator. And it is appointed for men to die once, and after that to face the judgment. How are you going to be judged? 
Have you lived a life that is acceptable to God? Did you know that the Bible says liars will have their part in the lake of fire? Is there one person on this street that can pull their hand up and say they've never told a lie? Can anyone on this street today say they've never told a lie? Well, the Bible says liars will have their part in the lake of fire. So what I'm saying is everyone on this street, including me, because I've told lies, is going to hell. Isn't that a miserable thing for me to say that today? That's a harsh message, isn't it? But I'm not saying it out of cruelty or to be cocky or anything. I'm saying it to warn you. But you know there is good news, folks. There is good news, and that's why I'm standing here shouting at you, and I might look like a bit of an idiot, but I'm telling you this because there's good news. Because you need today to think about God. You need to think about the fact you were created. You have a heart, you have a mind, you have a rational mind that God has given you to think about Him. But the main thing you need to do, folks, is you need to trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, left the glories of heaven. He lived a perfect life. He lived here for 30 years. He helped the poor, he gave to the sick, he did amazing things. But you know what this world did to him? They beat him, they spat on him, they put a crown of thorns on his head and they nailed him to a cross. But folks, his physical sufferings that you see on the paintings, that wasn't the worst thing. The worst thing is it says in the Bible, between the sixth and the ninth hour, darkness fell on the land. And between those three hours, Jesus cried with a loud voice, my God, my God, why? Have you forsaken me? And the reason he said that, because between those three hours, all of God's wrath, all of God's anger was poured out on Jesus' righteous son, on his righteous soul. He took the punishment for your sin because you've messed up, I've messed up, we've all done wrong. But Jesus was innocent. And on that cross, Jesus' innocent soul took all of the punishment for your sin. Now guys, have you put your trust in Christ? Have you put your trust and accepted you can never be good enough to get to heaven? It's only through what Jesus did. And the third thing you need to do, folks, is turn from your sin. Guys, if you are living in sin, turn from it. Jesus bled on a cross and he died for you. But he asks you to turn. The Bible says God commands all men everywhere to repent. That means Okay, this is my life here before, this is my drunkenness, this is my sex outside of marriage, my lies, my stealing, and this is my life with Christ. I want to follow after him, I want to know him. Guys, turn from your sins and find him. We're giving out these John's Gospels. Now, what would you think of me if I said to you, Harry Potter is a terrible book? What would you think of me if I said to you, Harry Potter is a rubbish book? Well, you might say, I, I agree with you. But what would you do if I said, Harry Potter is a terrible book, but I've never read it. Well, you say, well, read it first before you can make a judgment. Well, don't say the Bible is a load of nonsense without reading it. These are John's Gospels. We're giving them out absolutely for free. This is John. This is an eyewitness account. John saw Jesus die on a cross and three days later raised from the dead. If you died and three days later came back to life, I'd listen very carefully to what you had to say. My time is 80. Your time is 80. And you're certain of that, sir? I am. Okay, well the Bible says man's days are numbered by God. No one can know when they're going to die. There's no one who's sure. It's now I just ask if Revelation anyone... Revelation chapter 6. Pardon? Revelation chapter 6. I've put in the uh, library. Okay. Well, I'm giving out these John's Gospels. Anyone who'd like to take them, we're giving them out absolutely for free. Read these things, consider this, think about it through, okay? We're going to have a break there. It just used to get to me every single day and I thought, I call myself a Christian, but I don't understand this question. And the question's this, how could a loving God send anyone to hell? If there's a God above who looks down and loves us, how on earth could this God send anyone to hell? If God's love, how can he send someone to a place of absolute torment? Isn't that a question, ladies and gentlemen? How could God send anyone to hell? Now, let me ask you this. There's a man in America, and in 2005, this man's called John Cooey. And John Cooey abducted a nine-year-old girl called Jessica in Florida. He then abused her, he buried her alive in a plastic bag, and she died. And do you know when the police, the police found her body, they found her clutching a teddy bear. 
Now, if you were the judge, and you were the judge of this man who's committed this terrible crime, how would you sentence him? Would you sentence him to a light sentence? Would you give him nothing? Would you sentence him to 10 years in prison? 50 years in prison? Or would you give him the life sentence? So what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, for those who've just stopped, there's a man called John Cooey. He abducted a nine-year-old girl and buried her alive in a plastic bag. How would you sentence that man? You know, when we hear stories like this, we get quite angry. And we get angry about in the news when we heard about in Paris, those dreadful things that happened. Because we've all got a sense of justice. Just like a smoke detector. When the smoke detector senses a bit of smoke, the alarm goes off, doesn't it? And just like this, when we hear bad things happen in the news, we hear of bad people, our conscience goes off and we get angry about this. But let me ask you this. Is it healthy to get angry about these things? Is it good to get angry about these things? Now think about this, okay? So if we get angry when things like these dreadful crimes that have happened in Paris, if we get angry at those things, what about God? So we've all done wrong things, but God, who is absolutely pure, what about him who's got an even purer sense of justice? The Bible says God is a righteous judge and he's angry at the wicked every day. So those people in Paris, those dreadful men that did those bad things, God is angry at them. Don't be fooled, God is very angry, but he still loves, okay? The Bible says God is a just and, he's just and loving at the same time. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's the good news, folks. Even though we've messed up and we've done wrong, God sent his one and only son to bleed and die on a cross for your sins. And that's the good news.